Hello friends, I am Dr. Prashant Sharma and you are watching Medico Sahab. This is my fifth lecture on face and I am going to discuss the Bell's Palsy in this lecture. Bell's Palsy is a type of facial paralysis that results in inability to contract the muscles of affected side. This is one of the most common causes of the facial nerve paralysis of one side. About 70% of cases are, big, are basically of Bell's Palsy. Now, what is the occurrence? If I discuss the occurrence, then the cases are somewhere in between 1 to 4 per 10,000 individuals. In male and female, the cases are equally distributed and it mainly occurs between the age of 15 to 60 years. What is the cause of Bell's palsy? We'll say that cause is unknown, that is idiopathic. Although well, Bell's palsy is found to be associated with some infections like viral infections, varicella zoster virus, Epstein Barr virus, herpes simplex virus. But these are not the direct cause of Bell's palsy, these are found usually associated with it. Now, sometimes Facial palsy or facial paralysis may be associated with tumor, trauma or stroke. But it has to be understood that these are not considered as case of Bell's palsy. These are different from Bell's palsy. If there is some known cause of facial paralysis, it will not be included in Bell's palsy. Now, the symptoms, sign and symptoms. Symptoms are disappearance of wrinkles from the forehead. Drooping of eyelid, disappearing of nasolabial fold, drooping of mouth. Basically, on the affected side, the muscles are not uh, muscles are we are unable to contract the muscles. So the face is basically pulled towards the normal side because these muscles are unable to contract and these are able to contract. So the face is likely to be pulled on opposite side that is normal side. So the face becomes asymmetrical in this case. Now one more important thing, basically. The symptoms can be classified into two categories of Bell's palsy that is supranuclear lesions and infranuclear lesions. Now what happens? The upper part of face, upper part of face basically receives nerve supply from both sides of facial nerve that is right and left but the lower part of face receives supply from one side only that is contralateral facial nerve so contralateral facial nerve will supply the lower part of face while the upper part of face is having the bilateral representation so if supranuclear lesion occurs then 
the upper part of face will not receive the nerve supply from one side but it will be receiving the nerve supply from another side but if infranuclear lesion occurs then the lower part of face which is, which is receiving the nerve supply from one side only it will be disrupted so lower part of face will be paralyzed in supra and infranuclear lesions both but in supranuclear lesions upper part of face will be spared so the frontalis muscle and the orbicularis ocular muscles will not give symptoms so these symptoms that is wrinkles on forehead and drooping of eyelids these symptoms will not occur in supranuclear lesions normally the symptoms uh, will come uh, with uh, will become prominent within 48 hours but they usually fade away and uh, they take a time up to 6 months to fade away most of the individuals recover but some may have permanent weakness of the facial muscles so this is bell's palsy thanks for watching this video hit the like button share and subscribe our channel to get the latest updates and notifications